an amazing assortment of Formula One cars behind me. Let's take a look at all of them. And we'll start with the newest first, work our way back. Carlos Sainz here. Look at this. A little bit of aero, just a tiny bit of aero. 2017 Toro Rosso STR12. It is a mighty fine modern, modern take on Formula One where aero is everything. Horsepower, very impressive as well. Uh, Renault Turbo V6 here, hybrid era. Car didn't win any races, but it did do a lot of races back in 2017. Uh, take a look. All of the aero bits and bobs. Somewhat traditional, modern, pull rod rear suspension. This whole thing is just pure aerodynamics. Nose to tail. Even if it wasn't a crazy successful F1 car five years ago, it's still pretty darn cool. And who wouldn't love the single cannon fire, <laughs> mortar fire, V6 turbo exhaust, DRS up top. Again, you just look at all the aero treatments everywhere imaginable. Uh, no wonder we'd want to get your hands on one of these. Downforce being made, even with brake ducts. How crazy. Last Ferrari Formula One V8 non-hybrid 2013 the Ferrari F138. This did actually get two wins in 2013. Fernando Alonso, Felipe Massa with the team. Look at that. Not as many bits and bobs aerodynamically as we just saw on the Toro Rosso, but it's still very much an aerodynamic creature. Our keel, veins upon veins upon veins. Hello, Fernando. Lots of knobbage. Unique in the opening atop the engine cover as well, separate from the intake here. Pull rod suspension once again, again, pretty much the norm in this era of F1. Exhaust outlet, trying to keep that cool. Look at just all the ornate aero treatments here. Hey boys and girls, we're going to Ferrari World. Let's get some McLaren 
in our lives right now. Looking back to 2011, MP426. Six wins with this model in 2011. Jensen Button, Lewis Hamilton teammates at McLaren. Chrome treatments and definitely some swoopy aero options. A lot of winglets and profiles. Always love the giant floor and keel section on this car. No joke. No joke at all. Modest turning vanes here. Always appreciated McLaren's side pod treatment, radiator ducting treatment, instead of just having a big rectangle or a square hanging off the side. Obviously lowering things, lower profile. Less for air to try and break through. Our man Jenson Button. smart stuff going on at the back of the car too. Giant rear wing end plates on this. Somewhat shallow, if not extremely shallow diffuser. That was the deal back then. Also looking back at this era of blown exhausts and whatnot. Not exactly what we have here so much, but from this era in general. And here we have another McLaren with the wheel cover era as well. 2009 MP4 24, two wins. A lot of aero iterations of this car. We thought this one had some old school F1 purity with its looks. Not all the way, but some. This would be a Lewis Hamilton car. You can see the difference here just in a matter of years. We have basically the full height side pod across the entire width of the side pod then looking over here two years later concave bit here just less for air to have to penetrate indeed he is nice bladed shark fin Closure for the exhaust. <laughs> Narrow rear wing era. Never cared for this look. I know a couple people that did. Just wasn't one of them. Now we start getting into some sprouts and horns. Slightly devilish. Get the big stovepipe exhaust. 2005 McLaren MP420. Remember 
with the uh, the foam <laughs> from that year, but hey, you know, I'm open to uh, to anything here. Kimmy Riken in one of his hot rods. It's Mercedes power. Big old exhaust pipe there hanging out the top. Plus you got the chimney, the radiator exhaust outlets. Plus you've got your devilish horns, fins right there. And yes, anywhere we can squeak in bodywork, wing profiles, veins, anything that's gonna help condition the air, make downforce, reduce drag. That's the goal. The beauty of this. Look at this. That is an aggressive Formula One car without a doubt. About 1999, Ferrari F399. I failed to mention. We just looked at an MP420, by the way, from 2005. A lot of wins with this car. A lot of wins. But not everything that uh, Michael wanted in terms of championship wasn't exactly the best of years for him in that regard. Some adversity for sure. Still the shape of this vehicle. Classic. Absolutely classic. the top side exhausts having to manage that heat manage all of that while making a ton of power with this v10 engine also you have to deal with that heat reflective, heat reflective tape on the rear leg of the upper A arms, plus those little blue strips there. So actual temperature temperature sensitive. I'll tell you how hot things got. Groove tire era as well. I don't know if I can think of anybody who loved the groove tire era in terms of the tires themselves. I know I certainly was not one of them. Got to see this last year at the Velocity Invitational event. 1999 McLaren MP414, Mika Hakkinen's final world championship winner. I mean, hey, when you do that, you get your name on the car. So, <laughs> Uh, if we look at turning veins, Ferrari edition from 99, then we step back and say, holy cow, <laughs> yes indeed, that's a whole lot of turning vein, shape the arrow of the cars that head towards the back of the vehicle. I always love that steering wheel shape. Uh, 
airbrushed cars back then for McLaren. Radiator outlets here. Also, why not use that to make a little bit of downforce and to route air over as much of the tire as you could with wise and the rules. And we're getting towards the end of the show, friends. Another McLaren, another Mika car. 1995 MP410. What was unique about this? Well, size. Trying to fit people into it. Proved to be a bit of an issue for sure. This car just had such a unique look. This elongated nose coming down to a fine point. Just very different. Front wing and the secondary element as well. Just hung beneath the car. Two pillars, fairly normal for the time as well. Just a lot of curvature here. Just a lot of space to make down for us. And once again, we have turning vein, but not a crazy, crazy sized one. Mercedes V10 as well. It's our guy Mika. Pretty standard looking steering wheel. Classic, and this is classic of the era. The Coke box, or co Coke bottle shape, I should say. Getting to the end, y'all. Two more to go. Starting with a classic. Sad story, unfortunately, with Senna's loss at 94. Williams FW15. These Rothman colors, absolutely standard for Williams at the time. Uh, yeah. This guy was my idol. Just loved everything about him shape of the cockpit too so specific to this era kind of 91 ish 92 and so on with williams this car is just amazing amazing in terms of its history was not a great performer that year unfortunately And then we have the final, the final, and one of the, the Formula One cars, I'm stumbling here because I'm just a little gobsmacked by it. This was, to me, just heroic F1 car. This Lotus 99, and another Senna car. The uh, colors here, obviously classic with Camel of the era. But this 99T, famous to me and hopefully famous to a lot of people, the two wins that it earned, street racing is where it really, uh, really performed active suspension. That is what made this car just something so special. Active suspension, computer-based suspension. Raising, lowering, adapting to everything the track had to throw at it. Detroit, Monaco, just crazy to what this vehicle represents in terms of F1 advancements. Uh, wow. I you know I keep saying this, but such an honor to see this car know what it meant, know what it represented to the sport. <laughs> and hey, in this one and a half liter turbo era, coming back to a central point, uh, there's no amount of downforce that this motor could not push through. 
There's no concerns about drag, no concerns about excessive downforce. When you're making high nine digit at times, low four digit horsepower, a little bit prior to this 87 year, but nonetheless still similar time where this car took us to places we've never been. So thanks again to Juan Gonzalez. Thanks again, the Peterson Museum bringing these cars out would say the highlight of this event bar none